Hey, day 25 of my 30 days of react challenge and today I have built a um, banking app um, which is a continuation of the last video I did so I've been learning more about Redux and have implemented some slightly more um, complex Redux features so let's take a look so a quick demo um, here we have um, an ATM machine and a bank so I guess the idea is um, I was thinking about when you're using Redux, the whole point is kind of to have a global state which can be used by different parts of your um, program and I thought there was kind of no better example of that than a bank. We have ATMs dotted around the um, like country and then you have a central bank where you can do sort of more complicated um, uh, actions like maybe deposits or opening credit cards and these kinds of things. So we have an ATM machine here which is similar to my last app where you can just um, withdraw money like this and then down here at the bank you might want to top up your account so you can make a deposit like so and then the last feature down here is a transaction um, history oh, I deposited zero dollars that's not very useful <laughs> 100 there we go down here we have a transaction history where you can see um, records of everything you've done in regards to your um, bank account with the date um, transaction type as well as your closing balance. Complexity wise, this um, app isn't too dissimilar from the one I did yesterday. I've just kind of fleshed it out um, and explored a couple of sort of new concepts. Um, I guess first thing to look at is, first thing to talk about is like, um, I guess in my last app, which was basically just this little feature here, like withdrawing money, um, everything was hard coded in. So you weren't sort of passing any data like it was kind of once you decided once you clicked on the button and said that you wanted to deposit the money um, the amount was actually hard coded into our reducer here and what I've done this time is actually pass data as a payload so um, if we look down here at our on click which are these two buttons here you'll see um, we're passing 5100 as a variable but this button is actually referencing the same um, the same um, sorry police siren and the same function down here and we're passing either 50 or 100 depending on which button is clicked um, so if we jump over here you can see withdrawal what it's doing like in our switch uh, I've also switched to change from an if else statement to a switch statement. Both are like fine for using in the reducer, but I just thought I'd try a different kind of layout. Um, what we can see here is we are actually passing it, we're referencing here the action dot value, which is that past payload, and also using it in the sum to create the new balance. And then the only um, other kind of change from my last app is um, obviously this bank component, which is a separate component in the last app Everything was just done on the app JS, but I wanted to kind of have a go at um, having that global Redux state um, accessible from both the main app as well as an external um, component. So that's what we have here. And one other thing that I want to talk about, um, and that's this transaction history. Um, if we have a look here at our reducer, you'll see when we're like passing our um, when we're passing our dispatch and updating our deposit, we're also doing one other thing, which is um, adding a transaction history log to the transaction history here. So we'll see here that, um, ah, and the other thing I'm using is this concat. Like in other apps, I've kind of been using the push, like dot .push, if I want to push something into an array. But I read that apparently that can be, um, that can kind of corrupt your state. So I switched to concat, which copies your um copies the array instead of actually just pushing it into it makes it immutable um and each time so each time we do anything whether it's depositing or taking money out we're kind of adding a new object into this transaction history which has the date which we're getting from up here and with the inbuilt javascript method a transaction type turning its withdrawal deposit as well as how much and as well as the new balance afterwards, which is giving us this um, ongoing log. Cool. I think that's enough to talk about today. Thanks. Bye.